My name is Rex and I'm the physical therapist at McKinley Health Center and the purpose of this video is to talk about why you as a student might have neck and back pain and also to show you some ways that might be helpful in relieving that pain. I frequently see patients who come in with complaints of neck and back pain that has just gradually worsened over time and has gotten to the point where maybe they cannot sleep or they have trouble studying. The life of a student can be hard on your body. First of all, you sit for long hours every day, usually sitting in bad chairs and in bad positions. Here are some examples of students sitting in poor positions in different locations around campus and to include some apartments. These pictures happen to be taken on campus at buildings like the Union and Granger Library, but you will see similar positions all around campus in coffee shops and in various living arrangements like dorms, apartments, sororities, and fraternities, etc. Much of this sitting and studying involves using a computer, and, which is usually a laptop. Think about how many hours each day, every day, that you spend in front of a computer and you might scare yourself. Throw in additional time spent studying for exams, working on projects or papers, playing video games, and of course using a cell phone, and one can easily realize that our whole world is bent down into the front of us. So what happens when somebody sits at a laptop too long? Well, first of all, the spine should be in an S-shaped curve with the curve coming in this way. Here in the thoracic spine is coming out and then the lumbar spine should have a curve in. As can be seen here, this person is sitting with a slouch posture. The S has become a C. The lower back rounds out placing a sustained stress to several structures in the lumbar spine to include ligaments, muscles and tendons, connective tissue, and the spinal discs. Over time, this sustained stretch position may cause problems. Here's an analogy. Imagine if I told you to hold your wrist like this for three or four hours. I think you would agree that after a while, your wrist will start hurting. Well, the same thing happens in your spine, but fortunately the spine is stronger than your wrist. Looking at the upper back, going from an upright position to this slouch position, the head drops forward. So all of a sudden, the body has to start working harder to hold the person's head up when it's brought forward, compared to when the spine is holding it up. Here's another example. Your head is almost as heavy as this bowling ball. Now, when I hold this bowling ball up like this, my bones are doing most of the work holding it up. However, when I drop it forward, the bones don't do as much work and the soft tissues, muscles, ligaments, tendons have to do a whole lot more work. Now it's the same thing with your head when it drops forward in bad posture. The bones no longer are able to do the work as well and the soft tissues are having to work harder. Here's another point. Sitting in a typical slouch position means that one will sit with the elbows and forearms unsupported. If you're working on a computer this way, then the upper trapezius muscles are going to tense up as you're typing or mousing or swiping away. If I were to tell you to make a fist and hold it for three to four hours, you're going to think I'm crazy. But you're asking these muscles to do the same thing. Over time, people may get huge knots in these muscles, which really can become more painful and weaker, which leads into a vicious cycle. Now you might say, I can sit at the front of my chair and have good posture. That may be true, you can sit like this with good posture. However, two things come to mind. After 15 seconds, you have probably forgotten about good posture and you've slumped down into the bad posture where you're hanging on ligaments. Also, if your back is already angry at you, trying to maintain this good posture will likely overwork these already angry muscles so that they will get even more ticked off. The first step is to get off the front of the chair and sit against the back of the chair with good lumbar and upper back support. If the chair is not that supportive, then fold up a towel, use a small pillow, fold up a jacket, use a purchase support, and put it in the small of the back area. That will help with getting the spine back into that S shape again. Make sure you lean the upper back against the back of the chair as well. The next step is to support your arms on the chair's armrests. This will allow the upper trapezius muscles to relax. If your chair does not have armrests, then scoot your belly up to the desk and place your forearms on the desk, trying to avoid any sharp edges. It is important to keep your feet on the floor as much as possible. If you put one foot underneath the other leg or sit cross-legged, this may cause an aggravation to your knees. 
If you're shorter, it will not be possible in most chairs to get your feet on the floor and to get your back against the chair. Then you're going to have to make a decision. If you sit against the back of the chair, then you need a small box or a footstool to put under your feet. If you would rather have your feet on the floor, then you may need a bed pillow or one even thicker than that to give you back support. All right, we're getting close, but we're still not there. Now we have the body in a good position, but if you're using a laptop, your head is far away from the screen. You're not going to want to look like this when using the laptop. The solution for this is to elevate the laptop. You don't need anything fancy, just something that will place it close to eye level and then get an external keyboard so that you will be able to keep your arms close to you. If you have access to an external monitor, then go ahead and use that instead of the external keyboard. Now, in this position, you're looking straight ahead. Your bowling ball head is held up by your spine. Your normal spinal curvature is back so that you're not straining your lower back muscles. Your forearms are supported so your neck and shoulder muscles are more relaxed. It's just going to feel more comfortable. You want 90 degrees more or less at the elbows, hips, and knees as a reminder. Now here are some other tips that are worth mentioning that might help decrease your pain. Don't stay in one spot for too long. Get up and move around at least every hour just to get the blood flowing and to stretch out the body. A standing desk might be helpful just so that you aren't sitting so long. You can elevate your laptop also, or if you're reading, you can prop up your reading material so that you're not looking down too much. Healthy muscles are able to handle stress better and in general will heal faster. So some sort of exercising program will be helpful as well. There are plenty of other details that we can talk about to fine tune the ergonomic setup, but this is a basic setup that should be able to help you decrease your neck and back pain. It's always a good idea to talk to your physician to see if there are any other things that might be necessary to be looked at.